everybody. Uh, I think uh, this is our second maceration video and this time it's going to be on a bison. Now uh, you guys might have remembered this guy. He was the uh, caribou uh, we did from the previous uh, maceration video. And now we're going to work on a bison. So we're going to do it the same way. Um, soaking it in water, uh, rotting the flesh out. This guy is really fresh. You can see he's still fresh off the hoof here. Um, it's a huge bison. He's got 15 and a half uh, bases on him. He's about 32 inches wide. Um, I have a previous bison that I've got that was 36 inches wide, but he only had 12 inch bases. So, um, yeah, I got, th this is, this came from a friend of mine's, uh, ranch. He did a field harvest on them, uh, got the, all the meat off them, and going to do a little Euro mount on this guy. Uh, so once again, it's getting close to winter, um, doing this in the garage, just nowhere else to do it. But it seems to work okay. Um, it's not cold enough for the water to freeze yet. It's still September, but this year winter's pretty early. And uh, we're just going to leave them in here and let them rot out. We'll check in again on our progress and uh, we'll go from there. I've learned a couple little tricks. Uh, I've done this once before in a bison. I see these claws up here, I'm wondering what in the heck is that all about. But um, right by the base is here on the inside. That hide or skin is super, super thick and really difficult to get off. It's about the last piece of the bison that'll actually come off uh, just because we're not uh, submersing this and water, the whole thing in water. So we put those rags there, the water soaks up around them or keep them down, then it helps rot that off a little better. Um, the other uh, thing uh, that's a little tougher with maceration is on these horned animals is the uh, horns don't pop off super easy so you got to rot off the flesh and then basically let the skull and the horn dry and they'll pop off but um, it's going to look really good I think when we're done did a previous one and it turned out really well not done uh, um, degreasing it yet or whitening it and I'm just trying to get the horns popped off of it um, some guys will um, simmer or boil the horns and take uh, some channel locks and a rag around the horn and get them off but I prefer not to do that it um, just increases your chances of horn damage in my opinion but um, yeah this guy's a brute he's uh, he's pro if he was a, a government managed free range bison he'd probably be top 20 Boone and Crockett I would think he's pretty pretty heavy but, uh, and this, uh, he's sitting in a, a blue bin, and this is a fairly good sized blue bin. It's not just a tiny little blue bin. So, this uh, horn width is, like I said, 32 inches. The previous one was 36, just not as massive. And, uh, yeah, looking forward to seeing what this guy turns out like. We'll keep you posted. All right, just giving you guys a quick update on our bison maceration project here. Um, this guy really stinks um, compared to some of the other ones I've done, but I think that's mainly because um, so much of it's out of the water. If it was under all under the water, I think it would be a little better. Um, it is getting pretty late in the year up here, but I'm just going to... Oh yeah, so um, it's cold, but it's not so cold that we don't have a bunch of these guys going. It's exactly what we want is... Um, all these maggots eating all that flesh away. That's a great way to um, get this thing cleaned sooner than later. And uh, yeah, so just cover this back up after let them keep going. But um, let's keep uh, going here. See, it's a little tougher on this top part yet. It hasn't. Uh, really decayed much up there but um just gonna keep check a bit more here so you know it's starting to come but 
we're nowhere near being done on this it's pretty cool like I said it's above uh, freezing in the garage but I mean not uh, by much and it's getting it's into November here now so expect it'll be freezing any day we'll well put a water heater in the water to keep the bottom cool but that'll actually kind of help with uh, the stink too if the top's frozen the bottom's rotten out and or thawed water but hopefully we can get this thing rotted out by spring or way before spring if ideal and uh, keep going but yeah it's a long ways to go yet so we're started but um, I'm gonna check this again in about two weeks I'll keep you posted. Okay guys just a quick update uh, it's January here now it hasn't got very cold yet but uh, got busted in the garage so this moved outside I've tried to insulate it but I might just unplug this it might just have to freeze up for the winter but um, if it does it's not gonna hurt the skull at all but it was wife walked in the garage didn't care for the smell so got busted so now it's out here but anyways I've got it insulated with a heater in there um, once it starts getting real cold I'm just gonna unplug it wait till spring but for now I think it's going to uh, keep working a little bit and we'll see how it goes this spring alright just a quick update video it's early spring just drained the water I'm going to change it but we've got a lot of the flush has come off already still have a bunch more on this back end but uh, considering I'm sitting outside all winter that's not too bad but uh, we're going to go and um, get this cleaned up a bit and then get it back in the water and let the process continue okay the uh, whole process here of rotting this thing out is complete now it's getting mid uh, to a little later in the summer um, I just checked this today to see if, how it was going and it's basically 100% deflushed. I drained the water out and rinsed everything off but I just wanted to show you how good a job this maceration actually does. All the flesh right up into the horn cores is all uh, out. The back is cleaned right off and this is just with having a rag over the top. Now there might be a little bit of um, tissues hanging on but we've got a uh, way to deal with that. Alright here is the magic ingredients that we're going to be using to uh, degrease the buffalo skull. So as always the Dawn dish soap is uh, the most important uh, thing for degreasing but in my little uh, formula I also add in TSP. You can get this at Home Depot or Lowe's. Um, basically it's a degreaser, dewaxer and it works really good for getting the grease out and off of these skulls and it doesn't hurt the bone at all and last but not least borax now what borax does if uh, you get it and there's any you put it on and if there's any little bits of flesh or organic material it'll actually help uh, remove those so um, I added borax into the solution so uh, let's go ahead and get this thing started <sighs> okay so I just put the borax on here um, this area here is usually where all the little bits of flesh are, if there is any. Um, got a little bit around the bases there. Put some up in the nasal little cavity as well. Now the uh, next thing I want to do is get the TSP. Now this can, uh, this doesn't have to go on the skull, it can go anywhere. I usually just sprinkle a little on. But it's more for when you uh, put the water in it'll help degrease it. Now uh, the next step here is going to be to fill this with water and add the Dawn dish soap. Okay we are uh, just putting a little bit of the Dawn dish soap in now, filling this with water. Now I usually like to just put it directly on some of the more greasy areas as well. I don't know if that makes a difference or not but if you uh, start at the top it will always migrate its way down. I like to use a lot of soap and uh, we'll end up changing the water out on this probably uh, three or four times before winter and we'll see where we're see where we're gonna get uh, by then so we got a ton of soap in here I guess uh, 
put it all over, like I said, just to keep uh, filling this thing up, and then uh, we'll get the cloth over top, and we'll let it sit here for the, another couple weeks. All right, there we go. This is filled up with water. Um, the f bubbles will go way down, but uh, it's as high as it can go. Uh, put the cloth back over, and uh, I've done this before. And believe it or not, having the cloth over with the soap and the degreaser will actually draw some of the grease out of the skull and absorb in the cloth. So it's actually worthwhile having on there. Um, ideally, the um, horn caps will pop off someday, and I can put the whole skull submerged and completely degrease it properly but for now this will be good enough until the uh, skull shrinks enough that the horn caps pop off but um, we'll leave this in here and change the water out in a few weeks um, at this point there's no smell whatsoever to the skull we're literally just degreasing it um, the one thing that I was also going to mention was the borax I poured quite a bit of that into the brain cavity and that is just to make sure we get every little, well, any little bits of uh, material in there dissolved away. We don't want any of that in there because that will uh, end up stinking if uh, if we do have um, any moisture issues. But so we're just going to leave that sit, and so far so good. I'm pretty happy with the way this is uh, turning out so far. Hopefully by the time winter comes, this will be totally degreased, and we can bring it in. All right guys, this is now the end of the summer here and I have just pulled the bison out of the degreasing solution and I just wanted to show you guys how white this actually got without any uh, peroxide or bleaches and uh, to give you an idea of the size of this bison this is a full size kitchen table and the thing is just massive it's I believe about 30, 32 inches wide um, tip to tip on, or on the outside of the horns but uh, let's just take a look at how white this really is um, just wanted to go all the way around now bison's not really a greasy animal to start with so they're really not that hard to degrease but considering we couldn't fully submerge this I just want to show you this top bit so about from this section up actually about midsection here up we couldn't actually get that under water just because of the size of this thing and I didn't want to um, submerge the the uh, horn caps but if you were willing to submerge the horn caps you could have did it but um, I just wanted to show you too what this looks like so we just put the cloth around just to rot the flesh away and as you can see there's all these bone spurs um, everything got pretty clean that's probably the uh, darkest is right at the base of these caps but look how white this got just from putting the cloth over it with a degreasing solution. It really um, sucked the grease out and degreased it. Like I said, bison's not really a greasy animal to start with, but um, overall it looks really good. I'm just going to flip this over now so we can see how the underside did. And uh, nasal bones, this is really rare on a bison or a bigger animal to have these nasal bones. Usually people pressure wash this stuff and then they bust out but uh, yeah we were able to preserve them it looks great and just the teeth that fall out of these animals we'll glue those back in later but overall the results are really good let's turn okay, this thing over the bottom uh, for the most part looks pretty good now there's a couple areas that didn't turn out quite as good and I'll just show you that it's the underside of the uh, horn base here it's still not that dark but uh, just really hard to keep the cloth around there and have it degrease. Um, if we look here, th this uh, bleached out pretty nice. That might be a little bit of the borax in there. I think it is actually. Looks a little whiter, but um, in the base of here, there's a shadow on it, but that got fairly good. But where it's a little darker, you might not be able to tell because the light's shining on it. Just kind of some in this er general area here. And all of this area here, actually none of it was ever um, f fully submerged. So considering we just used this cloth method, it actually worked out uh, quite well at uh, getting this degreased and um, definitely uh, clean, like the flesh, everything's cleaned off, but it's actually quite grease free for the most part. It's turned out really well. 
you can tell this is an old bowl. Um, just the uh, where the roots of the teeth go in is very porous. It was like that. Uh, the, but the process we did never eroded the bone. This is just the sign of an old animal with these uh, porous pieces like that. And a lot of these teeth are loose. Um, some of these won't pop out, but uh, overall, really good results from this maceration method. Um, up in uh, north here in Canada, it does take a long time to do this just because we don't have the heat that they do in the south, but uh, it is possible. A couple spots that uh, never quite got as clean as I would have liked right in here. Um, some a little bit of residue up in there. Just this is kind of a greasy area typically, but um, but what we're going to do now. So the next step of this, I, I'm not going to bleach this skull with 40% peroxide. Some people like it super white. I actually quite like the natural bone or ivory look. Like that, it's fairly white to start with. Um, the light shining on this is making it look whiter than it probably really is in real life here. But uh, um, what I'm going to do though is I'm just going to take a 3% peroxide and I'm going to pour it on some of these places like in here that maybe never got enough water. I'll tip it up on its end and pour it um, through the nasal cavities, maybe some in the brain cavity. And what that's for, it's not really to bleach this out or whiten it at all. Um, that's just to really kill any bacteria, um, any smell that there might be. Now this is really clean. You can't actually smell anything on it. But uh, I just like to do that as a good best practice um, just to make sure that you don't have any um, anything that uh, might get you sick or start smelling later. But th this is super clean. It's totally dry. It doesn't smell at all. I'm just going to see if we can see inside the brain cavity or inside the uh, nasal cavity from the back. You can see all of that got preserved by doing this maceration method. And uh, typically, if you're doing a like a simmer or boil, all that stuff we cook out because it's very, very delicate uh, bone. So, anyways, um, I was going to do this on the kitchen table like I did with the caribou. If you remember that video, I'll. Um, when we uh, basically did the same method uh, except for with the caribou the skull is significantly smaller and we were able to just make a 40% paste and kind of even out the color of the bone on the um, on the uh, skull and just even things out and make it look good this is way too big um, as you can see I've got it in a, the same baking pan the caribou is in but the horns are almost as wide as the table these are buffalo or massive animals. This is a fairly good size one too. So I'm going to just take this to the bathtub and we'll pour the peroxide down, uh, let it sit a couple minutes and then I will uh, rinse it off. Okay so I'm really just going to be pouring um, some of this peroxide just on all these ducts and crevices just to make sure we kill anything. Now 3% peroxide isn't enough to uh, really bleach um, the skull out in this unless you have a fairly long uh, prolonged exposure so this will really just serve to uh, kind of de-stink this thing if there is any areas that need to to kind of um, just get freshened up a bit and I've already poured a bunch down the nasal cavity here Notice I'm catching it in the pan so we can re-pour it over. Anytime peroxide fizzes like that, that means it's touching blood or some kind of organics that it's reacting with. But uh, kind of expected that to some degree. All right, so pour it a lot on here. I'm just gonna go ahead and flip this around and pour some down the uh, brain cavity now. Okay, I was just gonna show you guys, see it's foaming here. So hopefully we're doing some kind of good, but uh, just gonna go and put a little on the back, pour a bit into the spring cavity here, which will run mostly out. Splash a little more on the back side, some of these hard to reach areas. We got most of that from the front before, but just 
go ahead and use most of this up. Right. A lot of this will go down into that pan. We'll probably just pour the pan through there one more time and then the next step will be to let it sit for a couple minutes and then we'll uh, rinse it. Okay, so uh, we just went and rinsed the peroxide all off of this. We're just gonna um, let it uh, dry down a bit then we'll move it back out to completely dry for a few days and then the next step will be to uh, put the hardware on so we can uh, hang this on the wall somewhere. Alright, hey guys, so we've got our bison skull, um, we've got it all kind of peroxide, it was just 3% with a quick bath just to kill any stink that there might be. Just wanted to kind of show you how big this thing really is, it's the size of the whole table. Um, and uh, you can't really tell in the video finder, but uh, um, the bone color isn't probably as white as what's showing up on the camera. It's more of a natural bone color. And I just uh, wanted to show you though how this all turned out. And the one thing that I did want to mention too was sometimes people tend to over process their skulls when they're um, doing these projects. They over whiten them like they bleach and bleach and bleach and bleach and bleach them with peroxide to make them this ultra shiny white and um, I've I got a couple like that but I really do prefer this natural bone color to that ultra bleached white now if you're in some places like Texas maybe that is um, something you'd actually find naturally out in the desert or Arizona or New Mexico maybe but for most places that's just not how you would typically find a skull so I kind of actually just like this basic white ivory bone color. So um, anyways, the next step on this whole process is actually now going to be putting the mechanism in here that we're going to use to uh, hang it to the wall. If you guys watched my caribou video um, on the Euro mount for that, we used the same hardware. Um, I was going to use a slightly different bracket for this one, but uh, when I got uh, working through things, uh, the same ring that we used, the same ring and uh, bolt combination that we used for the uh, caribou actually is going to work the best for this as well. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, get this installed. All right. Uh, so one thing you guys are going to want to do when you're putting these bolts on is kind of figure out kind of see from the side angle when you hang this on where is this loop going to come out and what kind of anchor are you going to use from the uh, coming out of the wall to hang this on um, but what I've kind of figured out for myself anyways for um, the best spot to drill these is if you drill it kind of right between here and you drill it um, not vertical like so, but you want to drill it kind of like at a 90 degree angle to the bone itself. And then if you can see in, I'm not sure if you can really tell the thickness, but it's quite thick right in this spot here. So if you get in, drill it straight through there, it's a really good anchoring point. Um, the hardware I use for the wall is meant for shoulder mounts. So when I am showing these on the video, they're hanging down from the hanger and the hanger, the top of the bracket shows. But uh, what I would really use um, when I put these in the final spot is gonna be like a leg bolt with a bit of a hook on the end. So it just basically comes straight out of the wall and let's have a little like a rope type hook. And then this uh, ring would just go on there. So um, yeah, so anyways, let's go ahead and start drilling this. All right, I just marked an X on the spot where I'm going to drill. Um, I don't have the tripod set up right now, so I'm just going to uh, put the uh, camera down. We'll drill this, and uh, we'll see what this looks like in a couple seconds here. All right, we uh, got our hook on here. And just to give you a little shot. So we drilled the hole. This bolt just comes through. 
we were able to put the wrench in there. That looks like there's some gaps there. Uh, it's just a little bit concave. It's super tight. We put a flat washer in there, deflected it a bit, and a locking washer. It's super tight. It will never fall off. Besides, it's even for some miracle it did come loose. There's hundreds of threads to get down there. So, anyways, next step. Basically just hanging it on the wall for a trial fit. Now we still do need to glue a few teeth in uh, and we'll get around to that. But um, next summer I might actually go and degrease this a bit more. As, as you can see, there's still a little bit of stuff there, but uh, for right now, I think we're plenty good. Uh, but let's go give this a trial hang on the wall. See how this turned out. All right, I just wanted to show you guys the hooks that I use. Um, so this is what I use to hang up my shoulder mounts. Um, I'm not sure if it's a rope hook or what you call these, but uh, you can get them in places like Canadian Tire in Canada or um, hardware stores all carry this kind of stuff. But uh, they're rated, these smaller ones, I think they're rated for 200 or 250 pounds, more than enough to uh, do a shoulder mount. But uh, um, sometimes I use a heavier, the bigger, heavier ones if I'm putting a moose up on the wall. But uh, anyways, I'm going to go and uh, grab the bison skull. We'll just put it on here just to show what it looks All like. All right, we got this hanging on the wall. It looks absolutely fantastic. It's just massive. Just give you an idea how big these bison skulls are. So there's my mountain goat uh, shoulder mount there. And this bison skull is just massive. If you just to take how wide that skull is compared to that mount and um, I normally have another sheep hanging there but uh, just put this up temporarily just to show it then uh, just to give you a, to get the back see this is um, how we have this ring hanging here pretty much fits exactly the top little um, points there aren't quite touching the wall it's just off the ring and then the teeth where they sit on the wall but uh, yeah, this looks absolutely great. We're really happy with the way this turned out. But uh, yeah, there you guys go. Uh, leave some comments in uh, the section below and uh, let me know what you think of this whole process. It takes a long time to do a Euro mount this way. I really like the results that you get from it though. Uh, the uh, nasal bones turn out really good you can see they're intact teeth aren't cracked cleans everything off nice leaves it a nice bone color I'm really happy with how this ended up so um, also I was just gonna mention too for the horns this is just the natural color of the horn itself um, actually it was I think if um, really uh, Thinking about it, uh, it, they were probably a lot dustier when I first got it, but through the um, maceration process and just spraying things off once in a while, that dust comes off. But this is, without the dust, this is the natural horn color. Um, some guys, um, if you're doing the simmering method to pop the horn caps off, they end up turning real shiny black or they polish them and uh, it doesn't really look natural. I really like the just the natural look um, if you are going to put some kind of coating on these uh, on the horn itself um, I would suggest uh, mop and glow for horns um, it will make them a bit shiny but it kind of gives them like a waxy protection kind of and uh, um, if you're going to do it for antlers uh, pledge liquid gold is um, what I was recommended but mop and glow is i think kind of the go-to for horned animals but uh, anyways let me know what you guys think of the uh bison euro mount and uh hopefully there's plenty more to uh, work on in the future but uh, i just do these for myself so if it takes me a year that's okay and uh anyways we'll see you guys in the next video